Hello everyone, this is a tutorial on the Westfield Race Manager timing software. Before we get to the software, uh, let me introduce uh, some of the components uh, in the uh, timing system. At the top here, you'll see several types of what we call transponders. So these are the tags that go on uh, any sort of vehicle that you're, you're timing. Uh, these could be cars, carts, uh, motocross, um, motorcycles, uh, bicycles, you name it. This blue box here is what we call the IDEC decoder. This is what will detect these various transponders that are on the different vehicles. The information from this blue box is then sent to the race manager software where you can actually time and score races. Now, this black cable here is called a USB to serial adapter. It connects on this one end here, this nine pin end plugs into the decoder, this nine pin connector. The other end plugs into your computer. Uh, this blue cable here is a network cable. This network cable can plug into this network, uh, this 10100 network port here. The other end would plug into your computer. Note that there are some computers that actually have a nine pin connector and you may use a nine pin to nine pin uh, connector to connect between the decoder and your computer. However, most computers these days do not have uh, these serial connectors. So you'll most likely be using one of these USB to serial adapters or a network cable. So now that I've introduced the components, let's go to Race Manager. When you start up Race Manager for the first time, it will pop up an error message, which indicates it cannot open serial port to the system. That's okay because we haven't set it up yet. Click okay to make it go away. Another error message will pop up. It'll say can't find RMS, check power, check and select port. Click okay to make that message go away. Now I'm gonna resize the screen here. Make this a little bit more visible. So first things first, you will need to connect your computer to the decoder. So select one of the methods uh, I mentioned earlier, which is either the USB serial adapter or the network cable. First, let's go over the USB to the serial connection or a serial to serial connection. What you'll do here is click the set COM port button and you'll see uh, COM ports. In my case, I have a COM2. It could be COM5, COM7, COM21. It depends on what your computer decides it's going to um, give to that USB serial adapter. So in this case, I only have one of these. Sometimes you can have more than one. For instance, uh, maybe you have another one that's driving a scoreboard controller. If you don't know which one is which, what you can do is make note of what's in here. Say there's a COM2 and a COM5 and COM7. Click the cancel button. And then you will unplug the USB end from your computer. I've unplugged the cable. Now, if I click the set COM port button, you'll see that my COM2 has disappeared. If you had other COM ports listed here, you'll see which ones are still listed and which one has disappeared. That way you can identify which uh, cable you just unplugged. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'll hit cancel and plug the cable back in. I plugged the cable back in. If I click the set COM port button, you'll see my COM port two has uh, appeared again. Select that, click okay. If there's a successful connection and you've plugged the cable in correctly to your decoder, 
you'll see these uh, three green bars here appear. Uh, the top bar indicates the uh, the time. And you'll see uh, the time is counting up. If it's counting up, you know you're connected. Uh, these other two just indicate uh, firmware version on the uh, decoder itself. Now, the second method I mentioned of connecting to the decoder is using a network cable. If you're connecting between the computer directly to the decoder, sometimes you'll need what is called a crossover cable. It looks the same as a, a regular network cable, but um, you know, occasionally you will have to use uh, such a cable. And these days, many computers uh, will do what's called an auto crossover. So you don't, you may not need uh, that cable. In any case, once you've plugged the network cable in, you'll want to click the TCP IP checkbox to use that method of communications. When you check it, it'll give you an error message uh, the first time you use Race Manager. It'll say, cannot open communication channel, please check settings. That's because we haven't set anything up here. Click OK. You'll notice this button here now says set TCP IP, whereas before, when this TCP IP checkbox was unchecked, it actually said set COM port. So click this button, enter the IP address of the decoder. By default, it is 192.168.1.49. The IP port is 10001. Note that this IP address could be different if somebody has changed the IP address on the decoder. And now sometimes you might have to do that uh, because uh, your IT person has set up the network in a different way. And uh, this can be configured through the web interface on the decoder. Once uh, this information has been entered, click the OK button. If you notice the time counting up, you've successfully formed the connection to the decoder. So I won't go over all of these settings on the setup page here. We'll move on to the assign tab. So click the assign tab here. This is where you're gonna make the mapping between the transponder serial number, which I'll go back to that screen. Note how these each transponder has uh, this serial number. Note, and every one of them is unique. There's no transponder that has the same serial number as another. So what we're doing is we're gonna map the serial number to the racer. So let's go back over to Race Manager and see how this is done. So here on this assign page, Note how it's blank on the top and the bottom. So what we'll need to do is create what's called an assignment template. Click Add New. And this assignment template, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, right now, what I generally do is I give it the name of the class, for instance, Late Models. You can make an assignment template for the Late Models. You could create another one for wing sprints or the, some other class of uh, vehicle. Note that some people will actually create an assignment for every heat race. For instance, late models heat one, late models heat two, late models aiming, late models feature, but uh, that is very time consuming. And most people, when they do that, is they will use a scoring software, which does this uh, automatically for them. Uh, and there are quite a few out there that you can check out. I won't go over those, but uh, for now, let's just understand how the assignment template works. So let's just call this late models. Once you've created that, select what you've just created, in this case, late models. And what you're going to do here, you see there's one blank line, and this is how we're going to map a transponder to a racer. So I have some transponders here. Uh, this first one is 85283. I'll just call this racer one. 
And that's all you need for each transponder. However, you probably want to add uh, some information such as last name, first name. Let's ignore these other columns for now. They're, they're not necessary to, to use. You can leave those blank. Hit the Enter key a couple of times. It'll create a new line. Now I have another transponder here. I'll put this in. Let's call this racer to X. Hit the enter key a couple of times. Put another one in here. And we'll call this car 03. And one more. Now you can, these, these numbers don't have to be two digits. You can actually uh, make it longer, for instance, something like that. Once you're done, all you have to do is make sure you've selected whatever class you're gonna time. For instance, if you actually had uh, say, uh, maybe a 410. If you're gonna time the 410 sprints, you would select 410 sprints. But in this case, I have nothing entered for that. So we're gonna select late models. We go to timing. Note how it indicates late models up here. If we go back to assign, we select 410 sprints, you'll notice that the name changes. We'll go back to late models here. And all you have to do is hit the start button and you're ready to go. So cars are coming around turn four, flag person's about to throw to green, you hit the green along with the flag person. Now, as a transponder goes by, you will see it appear on the screen. And note how you can actually adjust the size of these screens if you want to have a little more visibility. So on the left-hand side, what we have is the running order. We call it the place screen. On the right-hand side is the actual crossing as it goes by. So let's say another racer goes by. And you see that up here. And then the other two. And say car number one comes around again. Note how there is this bluish purplish line. This indicates the leader uh, for the race. Now say the leader changes, and you'll see how it changes. Now it's 2x. And the way I'm actually generating this data is I'm just waving these transponders next to the decoder. If you wave it next to that circular coax connector on the back, you actually be able to detect transponders. Now, when you are about to hit the you know, finish line for the last lap, say the cars are coming around at turn four and they're about to take the checker, hit the finish flag, this allows every racer to finish the race. Now, if the racers come around again, they will not be counted. So for instance, sometimes cars will take a cool down lap before they get off the track. So you note how the, uh, the subsequent crossings are grayed out. They're not being counted. We've stopped at lap five and because the race is uh, actually over. When we're really finished with everything we're doing uh, for that timing session, Click the stop button and 
you can save that data away. Uh, you'll want to do this uh, after every race, unless you don't want to save that. Maybe you're just playing around. But um, since you're going to use the same template over and over again for the late models, uh, only the cars which uh, show up on the track uh, will uh, appear on the screen. So maybe you have uh, 25 late models, but you're only running uh, maybe 12 for one session and 13 for the other, other session, the other heat. Uh, you can use this uh, assignment template for both of them. And only the cars which uh, which are on the track will show up, like I said. Um, so for instance, this one will name this one late models, heat one, and click save. Now, if you run another session, so as soon as you hit start, it's like we started a new session. And maybe this happens to be the feature. So I'll just give it a little bit of data here. I won't do too many laps. Note that uh, I don't have to use the finish button. Say, for instance, maybe uh, lap two is uh, is the end of, of the race, um, and I didn't use a finish button. If I'm done with the timing session, all I have to do is hit stop. But uh, if you know, if you were on that uh, last lap and you wanted to use the finish flag, you can. And often it's it's more informative if you actually do that. But say in this case, we, we know we're done. We'll click stop. And perhaps this was the, uh, uh, the feature. And we can name this feature. And that's it. That is race manager in a nutshell. Um, Next time we will go over some of the other features, uh, for instance, the settings on this page and uh, you can learn how, what, what each one of these, uh, these function uh, feature does.